What's good, y'all? We're back. In this video, we're going to talk about current measurements. So far, we've seen that in every circuit, for each individual element, we can think about the voltage drop across that element. So if I look at the lead above and the lead below, and I attach one probe of a, a multimeter or voltmeter to one side, the other probe to the other side, how much voltage change happens across that element. That's called the voltage drop across the element. The current running through the element is literally a measurement of current flow going from one lead to the other way, lead through the body of that element. In order to accurately talk about how to measure current, let's introduce some new technology or new terminology to discuss what's happening when we measure voltages. So we've connected the battery, we're taking a look at this. Let's go ahead and use our digital multimeter. We'll set it onto volts. So we use the function dial to say, hey, I want to use the volt functionality. Formally speaking, way back when that would be called a volt meter because it's measuring volts. Now we take the positive lead and the negative lead. So black is negative, red is positive. We connect it across that element and we get a 4.96 reading for the voltage drop across that resistor. This voltage drop is done in parallel. We're gonna talk more about parallel elements and series elements in later videos. But note right here, what's happening is we're not breaking any connection in this particular circuit. All we're doing is parallel to this resistor, literally right next to it, we attach one lead of the multimeter above, one lead of the multimeter below, and then we measure the voltage drop in parallel to that resistor. In contrast, when we measure current, we're actually going to break connections in the circuit and then set up our multimeter. In this case, we're gonna focus on an ammeter in series with the resistor. Let's see what that looks like by transitioning over. First thing that we do is we turn off our multimeter. We disconnect the leads. I would always suggest to get in the habit of depowering the circuit before you actually want to collect this measurement. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up the multimeter in series. And let me show you what I mean by in series. Here's a diagram to represent the actual measurement we're going to take. The idea here is we're like gonna cut one of the ends of this resistor, put the positive lead of the ammeter at that end, and then reconnect the negative lead to the other end of the circuit. Let's go ahead and do this here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda deconnect. So you can see that I took that lead out. I take the positive lead of my multimeter and connect it to that lead there. I take the negative end of my multimeter and connect it to the other lead. And so now the whole concept here is when this circuit is turned on, when I power it, current is gonna flow from the positive lead of the um, voltage source down through this resistor. And then that current is gonna be kind of forced in through the multimeter out through the black lead back this way and that completes the circuit. Now normally if I were to disconnect this, this would be a short circuit. Nothing would happen in this because the, uh, the charge differential in the voltmeter doesn't have anywhere to go. There's no physical connection. Only when I connect them through the breadboard do, does current flow, does electron actually pass. When we put the multimeter in between to get that measurement, we're actually reconnecting that circuit and then the meter itself kind of just tests how much electricity is running through that. What's the current running through there? So from this standpoint, let's repower our circuit. So I put that on and then in this case, we're not going to use the volt meter. We're going to use what we call the amp meter functionality. So we put our function dial all the way up to amp meter. Notice in this situation, we get 5.12 milliamps. And you can kind of see that in my digital multimeter, I get milliamps there. So that's a positive 5.12 milliamps. I do want to discuss if I switch the polarity, the same idea from measuring voltage drops across the element plays. So if instead of connecting the positive lead up top and the negative lead up bottom, I could switch it. Could you guess what's going to happen? Ding, 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 you got it. 
it's the same magnitude measurement, but the polarity is negative. And so in this case, we're looking at a measurement of a current from this lead over to that lead. So the reference direction of my current measurement is going from the red to the black, but the actual current in the circuit is going opposite, and that's why we see that negative there. This right here, when we have the measurement of current by cutting parts of the circuit out and then putting the ammeter inside of that, that's called in series. So we say that two electrical components are in series if a single lead of one of the component touches a single lead of the other component and then the connection between the entire circuit is made with the other leads of those components. Let me repeat this. When we measure the voltage drop across an element, we do so in parallel. The voltage drop across is done parallel to the resistor. When we measure the current running through, we do it in series. Later in this modeling activity, we're going to see that measuring current like this is actually really disruptive, especially this is not so bad because right now we only have two elements. But imagine I had a circuit with like 15 elements. Imagine having to cut every single element to get each current. It's kind of a pain in the neck. And these measurements are not super precise. As we get more sophisticated, we'll see for a a kind of a nice trick to make this easier to understand. But for now, that's how we measure current. Same idea of a polarity applies. The black lead to the red lead matters. In the next video, we'll talk about how to actually apply this. The last thing I want to say here is we generally talk about positive currents as going from red to black in the ammeter, when I actually connect this, if I connect the ammeter up here with the red and the black on the bottom and I get a positive sign, that means that the current in the actual circuit is going this direction. We'll talk more about that. I have some unique uh, approaches to designing and defining reference directions in current, but it's directly relevant to this idea that we say that positive current in the ammeter happens when the actual current in the circuit runs from red to black in my ammeter. Negative current happens in the opposite. So if my red is up here, my black is down here, and I get a negative reading, that means that the actual circuit current is going in the opposite direction. In the next video, we're going to test the, the first circuit build for all of the circuit variables involved. I'll see you in the next video.